really fast tapping on the left side. And the slower tapping on the right side. And they don't do both sides simultaneously. They do one side at a time. And I think today was day four of transcranial magnetic stimulation therapy or TMS for depression and anxiety. And if you've been following along, you know that my goal is to make a video every day that I'm undergoing TMS treatment so I can keep track of my mood and see if this treatment is really helping me. So this is the fourth video. Uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, they do increase the intensity and their the intensity of the tapping um, and their goal is to get to 120. Today they were doing 75 on each side as far as the intensity goes and I think the left side is for depression and the right side is for anxiety. So yeah, uh, I had my treatment at 8 a.m. as usual. I, I arrived like 10 minutes late but they still um, see you for the duration of the uh, treatment which is about 45 minutes even if you are late. It wasn't too bad. They're always um, they always ask me before they increase the intensity and they ask me if, it, if I'm still feeling okay or if they like if I need them to lower it. Overall they have been very super helpful and accommodating and they really seem to go out of their way to try to make me feel comfortable and relaxed. Um, and so it is SoCal or Southern California SoCal TMS Center. They're in Rancho Cucamonga. So if you are like looking to get TMS, this is not sponsored or anything. I just want to point out that they've, the staff and everything, they've, um, they've been pretty great. Um, I have been experiencing headaches after treatment for the first three treatments. For the first two treatments but I didn't experience a headache yesterday and I haven't experienced the headache today so I think that's good maybe my body's finally getting used to it I'm just more tired today than usual so starting with the medication I took this morning I took my usual 26.1 milligrams of Asteris which is a stimulant medication for ADHD um, and I have one of the things that my psychiatrist said not the psychiatrist who is administering the TMS but my like normal psychiatrist who I get medication from is that um, I, I talked to him about how I felt like I was having like a manic episode even though I'm not diagnosed with bipolar I'm diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder ADHD major depressive disorder and cerebral palsy and he wanted to add a medication called Seroquel I think because he said it's used to control like mania but it also has some properties that will help with sleep because I, I told him I had been having trouble sleeping too but I told him I don't want to move my medication around too much because I'm doing kind of a case study on myself for my own benefit and if I start switching up my medication uh, they tend to have very bad initial side effects for me like make me very drowsy, nauseous what and whatnot, then I won't know if the TMS is actually working. I also recently started uh, psychotherapy or counseling again so I've only seen the provider twice. We're still kind of like in the get to know you phase um, and then I'm also trying to get my sleep schedule back on track. I'm trying to like eat healthier and exercise a, at least a little bit. Um, on a daily basis and all of these things kind of come together and will also improve your mental health right so in the end I guess I won't know exactly if if my depression and anxiety improve I won't know if it was just the TMS or the fact that I'm making all of these life changes that collectively kind of uh, came together and improved my mental health so just keeping that in mind as we move forward but I mean whatever works worse works right I, I don't want to be like trying to pinpoint oh well this is exactly what worked if something does work I just want to feel better at this point as far as my mood today man I have been exhausted I have mentioned in the previous videos that I have been feeling a little bit fatigued but um, today I took a nap and I'm still tired and I think part of the reason for that is that I have been stressing myself thinking about going back to work 
Um, I work um, as a speech therapist in the schools and I've been on summer break, although technically I didn't get much of a break because I have been completing like clinical placements and internships and classes for my graduate program uh, online. But yeah, I will be going back to work this Monday, so in two days. Um, and my supervisor's already like been in touch with me via Zoom, over the phone, via email to talk to me about like incoming cases of kids who need speech. And I'm not the only SLP in the district. I work for two charter schools and we have a total of like three of us, three SLPs and one slipper. So like, you know, my supervisor has been reaching out to kind of talk about how we're going to distribute the caseload between the three SLPs, um, like what grade levels I'm going to be working on, uh, working with, and uh, upcoming assessments that literally like the first week back, I have to assess a couple of kids already. And so I think thinking about that, thinking about all that kind of stresses me out. Work is definitely a stress um stress inducer for me, as it is for anyone, I'm sure. But uh, because I suffer from social anxiety and I'm very introverted and I kind of chose a career where I have to be like on all the time um, and like be around people all day and have meetings with parents. And I love what I do, but it, it can be very exhausting. It, it feels a lot like I'm just masking throughout the day, all day long. Like then, when I'm working, I'm barely, I feel like I'm barely functional enough to just, to just get through the day, like get through the work day, but not really have energy to do anything else, uh, much else after that. So I'm hoping the TMS will help with that too. I messaged my boss, which is, he's the, the SPED director, um, to let him know that I was undergoing treatment and that I was going to need to um, leave early for the next month and a half or so. Um, because I'm at work from 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. And the last session that they offer at the TMS Center is uh, 4 to 5. So that, you know, I'm about half an hour to 45 minutes <clears throat> away from the treatment center. So that wouldn't give me enough time to, like, you know, get out of work and and then go to the treatment center and get there on time for my session. So I messaged him. He said, yeah, that's fine. Do whatever you have to do. Um, I would have to be out of work by 3 instead of my usual 4 p.m. And then like a couple days later, he sent me uh, an, a meeting invitation to an IEP meeting for Thursday an IAP meeting that um, starts at 3.30. And I messaged him again. I was like, hey, um, remember, I do have my TMS treatment that I have to go to, um, so I wouldn't be able to make it. I can call the parents on over the phone on my way to the TMS center and report out on what I see so far as far as the assessment. Uh, or I can email them or I can like meet with them later. What do you prefer? And he's like, well, how many days a week do you have to like go to this thing? And like that was kind of initially covered on the first message I sent him. I was like, yeah, it's um, it's intensive. It's five days a week. And he's like, well, how many more treatments do you still have to do? And I'm like, why? Well, I, it's 38 treatments total and I've just completed my first four treatments. So I still have to do 34. And he's like, okay, well that would put you out all the way like around September, past September. But we already scheduled all the IEP meetings on the SPED, on the SPED calendar in advance. And a lot of those meetings do start after three because we are kind of jam packed back to back with meetings. Um, so it sounded to me Again, could just be like cognitive distortions because I do tend to see things on a negative light, which is not great, which is something I'm trying to change. But it sounded to me like he wasn't too happy about um, like me asking for that hour off. But in the end, he said, uh, yeah, just do what you have to do. Uh, you know, you can leave at three. And, and I said, yeah, my schedule for the next two months or so is going to be super jam packed. So. It's going to be um, work from 7.30 to 3. Then after work, I'm heading straight to the TMS treatment center. I have my treatment from 4 to about 4.45. And then I have to <clears throat> come back home. So it's about a half hour to 45 minute drive back home. I'll, I'll probably be here by around 5.30. And then I have class via Zoom online 
from six to eight. And I think my schedule for the upcoming semester is easy. Oh, Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Attending class is actually the easiest part. The studying and everything else that has to be done is what gets me, especially because I struggle with like task initiation, procrastination, and organization, and all the good stuff that comes with having ADHD and depression and everything else. Um, like Another thing that I've noticed, because I'm currently taking a voice disorders class for my graduate program, and a lot of it, of course, it's focusing on people who need treatment for their voice, right? So they might have vocal nodules or something might be going on with their vocal folds. Sometimes people who are lifetime smokers will end up with a voice disorder where they're, they're, um, they have trouble speaking. And so we're, as we're going over what a voice disorder sounds like, because it can sound like several different things and kind of rating the severity scale of a voice disorder on different like criteria. Does it sound breathy? Does it sound strained? Um, does it sound rough? And rating that on a scale from like one to five, I'm noticing like, man, my voice sounds kind of strained, kind of rough a lot of the time. Um, and I think part of that is because I, and I've mentioned this before, I feel like I never take a proper full breath and I feel like I'm always breathing from my chest. And I brought that up to my therapist the last time I saw her and she said, that tends to be a phys physiological response to anxiety. So if you've been anxious and on high alert, you know, on edge for most of you, like, you know, that kind of teaches you to do mostly chest breathing not really take full breaths so it's like you have to learn to do proper belly breathing which is something that I've always always struggled with like even if you pay attention to my videos I feel like I have to take breaths at weird parts during my sentences when I'm speaking like I get cut off mid-sentence and I think that's because I don't have proper breath support and I'm noticing all these things as I'm going through my voice disorders class because and then also I've been trying to sell my Tesla because I talked about you know in a previous video that I might not be able to afford it a year from now because I won't have a job because I have to do a full-time internship that has to be free for an entire year so I met with someone today who messaged me about wanting to come see the Tesla and I listed it for like 20 grand, right? Because it has the full self-driving package. Like you don't have to pay the, sub the subscription. It was already paid up front for life. Like, and that was like an $8,000 um, add-on. And it's got about 100,000 miles. But I mean, other than that, it's in pretty great shape. It really, they're there's nothing wrong with it really it's, it's like a clean title so I listed it for 20 grand because I owe about 17 grand on the loan now and I figured if I list it for this much I can pay off the loan I don't have to worry about that and I'll have some extra money in case I want to look into buying a different uh, another car but definitely won't be in payments I, if I do end up buying another car I want it to be like completely paid off up front so he came and he um looked at the car and he inspected every inch of it and he said you know what uh, I don't know the rims are scratched or something and he was going all around the car with this detector which I thought was like a metal detector at first but he said he's just looking at the thickness of the paint to see if any of the parts of the car have been repainted and he's like what happened here on the door it's not the same thickness or density like did you guys repaint it I'm like no but I mean, I'm not the first owner, I'm the second owner, but the first owner didn't say anything. And he's like, oh, and then he looked at the, what was it, the roof? Like the, it's not the windshield, it's the sunroof. And there was like a tiny, like like a crack that I hadn't noticed. And he was like, oh, there's a crack. And I was like, yeah, I didn't see that, but I could literally just pay like the $500 deductible and have my insurance replace the whole thing. So because of all these things, he tried to lowball me and he's like, oh, I can give you 15500 for it. So 15000 He went from 20000 to 15000 and I'm like, uh, yeah, no, that's not going to work for me. That would still leave me upside down on the loan. And again, socializing is very, um, it can be draining and exhausting for me. And I think that's partly why I'm feeling... Uh, more tired uh, but yeah a little bit of a side story there as far as treatment again wasn't painful it was bearable um, it was fine today uh, I also 
I have been looking for a therapist for my mom. She's Spanish speaking only. So I went, yeah, I set up a couple of 15 minute consultations with a couple of therapists that she could talk to. Um, she chose a therapist that she liked. I had to call the insurance to get the referral number and all that um, because she doesn't really speak much English. And this is like a huge step, right? Because my parents are very like old fashioned Mexican immigrants um, and mental health is it's not really talked about in the Mexican community or the Latino community in general, I think. Um, it's almost taboo. So the fact that she's agreeing to see a therapist, because she has gone through a lot of trauma in her life, um, um, was, was pretty great. So I did that. So that's what I did today. And I spent some time with my son watching TV. And who I saw was my sister, my nephew, my parents, my son. Uh, who else did I see today? Oh, the TMS technician, uh, and that's it, and what I did, who I saw, and then uh, how I feel, so, I don't know, depression and anxiety levels are pretty much the same as they were, I'd say an ex anxiety is maybe a level 8, whereas a depression is maybe a 7 out of 10, um, and other than that, I'm just really tired, I'm starting to feel that fatigue. Yeah, that's pretty much it. In a nutshell, I will be back um, on Monday. And my mood and everything might have changed by Monday because that will be my first official day back at work. So we'll see how that goes.